Hello friends, in the previous lecture we formally solved the radiative transfer equation for a plane parallel slab. It turned out that the temperature distribution needs to be known if we assume radiative equilibrium and if temperature distribution is known we need to find out the radiative heat flux which is a function of space and the divergence of heat flux the radiative heat source term as a function of space. In this lecture we will take one example of the solution of radiative transfer equation in plane parallel slab where the temperature distribution is known. So, we have uh, basically a semi infinite medium that consists of a gray, gray means the absorption coefficient is independent of wavelength. So, we have absorption coefficient in the medium. So, we have a plane parallel slab. Now, it is said that it is semi infinite that means the separation between these plates is very large ok. Uh, Let us call this infinity ok. So, this is a semi infinite medium. So, this may be located at z is equal to 0 and this plate is located at z is equal to infinity. This is a semi infinite problem. So, we have gone one step further simplification in the lecture uh, this uh, lecture before this we made certain simplifications that the plates are infinite in x and uh, y direction. Now, we have made one more simplification that it is semi infinite that it extends to infinity. The purpose of doing this is basically the any radiation from the plate top plate cannot reach the plate at z is equal to 0. Now, there is a temperature distribution uh, the temperature distribution T is equal to T naught where T naught is 1000 Kelvin E minus z by L that is the temperature is decreasing uh, as we move away from the plate. The plates themselves are cold and black that means plates do not emit any radiation they are cold and black. So, we have to find out the intensity of radiation leaving the bottom plate of course, it is going to be a function of theta and we have to find out the heat flux Q at the bottom surface. So, we will start uh, so, one thing is clear that we are only interested in I minus there is no I plus here. So, all the radiation is moving as far as uh, any point on the bottom surface is concerned all the radiation is moving down. So, there is no forward or upward movement of radiation the plate itself is cold. So, it does not emit any radiation. So, there is no I plus here. So, we have only I minus which is function of tau and mu but we are interested in finding I minus at 0 that is at the bottom plate tau is equal to 0 and mu which is dependence on theta. So, we start uh, instead of uh, the solution of heat flux we start with the solution of intensity I minus tau mu is equal to I minus tau infinity I have written is infinity because the top surface is at infinity mu e power minus tau infinity minus tau by mu minus 1 upon mu tau infinity e power minus tau minus tau prime by mu s tau prime d tau prime ok. So, this is the equation uh, or the solution of the radiative transfer equation for intensity in direction mu at any location tau for the downward movement of intensity downward moving wave. Now, this term is 0 there is no radiation that is going to reach from the top surface to the bottom surface and we are going to put tau is equal to 0. So, we are interested in this solution I minus 0 mu and this will be equal to minus 1 upon mu 0 to infinity. Now, there is no scattering. So, we will just write I b 
tau prime. So, this is going to be e power tau is 0, so tau prime by mu and d tau prime. Okay. So, this is what basically we have got. Now, the temperature distribution uh, is known T is equal to T naught E power minus Z. So, L is basically equal to 1. So, I will just leave the L part here. So, T naught E power minus Z. Okay. So, we get I minus 0 mu as equal to minus 1 upon mu 0 to infinity and then we have to find out the temperature dependence of this I B. So, we are dealing with a gray problem. So, we write 1 upon pi sigma t power 4 E tau prime by mu d tau prime and this will be equal to minus 1 upon mu 0 to infinity 1 upon pi sigma and then t power 4. So, t naught power 4 e power minus 4 z e power tau prime by mu d tau prime. Okay. So, uh, now looking at this you may think okay, now this looks uh, 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 easy to integrate. Right. So, we can basically write it like this minus 1 upon mu uh, and we can just put it pi here and sigma here. So, t naught power 4. So, minus sigma t naught power 4 upon pi mu is equal and then 0 to infinity e power minus 4 z tau prime by mu and d tau prime. Okay. Now, we have to uh, solve it uh, then uh, uh, what we will do is we just uh, write down this expression like this i minus 0 mu is equal to minus sigma t naught power 4 pi mu and by the way mu is basically nothing but cos theta. So, we get this as e power minus 4 by so z 4 by or simply kappa l minus 1 by mu and then in the denominator we get 4 by kappa l minus 1 by so this will be just simply mu and then we have to put the limits 0 to infinity okay so we get basically i minus 0 mu as minus sigma t naught 4 divided by pi mu e power minus tau prime where z value is from 0 to infinity in multiplication we have 4 upon kappa l minus 1 by mu and in the denominator we have 4 by kappa l minus 1 by mu. Now, we see that the numerator will be 0 for z value infinity. So, numerator will basically vanish for the value of z equal to infinity and it will be simply equal to 1 for the value of z is equal to 0. So, what we get is i minus 0 mu as equal to sigma t naught power 4 by pi and then we will just have 1 over 1 minus 4 mu by kappa l. Okay. And uh, so, this is the intensity uh, for the radiation leaving the bottom surface. So, this intensity uh, if you want to write it in terms of theta will be simply equal to minus sigma t naught power 4 pi and this will be equal to cos theta 
वन ओवर वन माइनस फोर कॉस थीटा बाय कप्पा एल सो दिस इज द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर इंटेंसिटी लिविंग द बॉटम सरफेस फ्रॉम द सेमी इन्फाइनाइट मीडियम नाउ वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट द रेडिटिव हीट फ्लक्स सो वी राइट क्यू एट जेड इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो वी हैव टू बेसिकली मल्टीप्लाई बाई कॉस थीटा एंड इंटीग्रेट ओवर ऑल द सॉलिड एंगल्स सो वी राइट दिस एज आई एन कैप डॉट एस कैप डी ओमेगा नाउ दिस विल बी सिंपली इक्वल टू आई माइनस जीरो म्यू एंड देन विल बी मल्टीप्लाइंग बाय कॉस थीटा और साइन थीटा डी थीटा एंड देन वी हैव जस्ट टेकन द इंटीग्रेशन ओवर द सॉलिड एंग द एजीम्यूटल एंगल आउटसाइड एंड दिस विल वेरी फ्रॉम जीरो टू पाई ओके सो वी विल गेट क्यू एट जेड इज इक्वल टू जीरो एज इक्वल टू टू पाई सिग्मा टी नॉट फोर वी जस्ट सब्सटीट्यूट दी एक्सप्रेशन फॉर इंटेंसिटी फ्रॉम दिस रिलेशन सो वी गेट टू सिगमा पाई टी नॉट पावर फोर एंड देन इंटीग्रेशन फ्रॉम पाई बाई टू टू पाई बिकॉज वी आर जस्ट टेकिंग द डाउनवर्ड डायरेक्शन सो वी हैव टेकन फ्रॉम पाई बाई टू टू पाई कॉस थीटा साइन थीटा डी थीटा डिवाइडेड बाय वन माइनस फोर कॉस थीटा बाय कप्पा एल ओके सो वी हैव रिटर्न द हीट फ्लक्स एज एन इंटीग्रेशन ओवर द पोलर इंटीग्रेशन ओवर द पोलर एंगल मल्टीप्लाइड बाय कॉस थीटा and multiplied by in the intensity so after we do this integration which is uh, relatively easy to do we get q at z is equal to 0 as equal to minus 2 sigma t not power 4 0 to 1 mu d mu upon 1 plus 4 mu by kappa l okay so this is relatively easy to solve i will just give you the solution here q tau is equal to uh, Zero is equal to minus sigma t not power four kappa l by two one minus kappa l by four ln one plus four mu by kappa l and this will be zero to one. so this is how uh, we can calculate the radiative heat flux by integrating over the limits and putting the limits we get q at tau is equal to 0 or z is equal to 0 as simply equal to minus 1.69 into 10 to the power 4 watt per meter square so this is the expression uh, this is the value of radiative heat flux leaving the bottom surface and uh, for this semi infinite medium we could solve it uh, with some little bit uh, of math but still the math was manageable and we could integrate it by hand for other problems we will have to apply numerical procedures to solve the problem the integration in this problem was relatively easy to handle and do it by hand and that's why we could solve for the radiative heat flux leaving the bottom surface for this semi infinite medium the next thing that we will develop is uh, the radiative heat transfer in cylindrical media so radiative heat transfer in cylindrical media uh, appears in uh, many many examples because many times the furnaces are also cylindrical in shape then uh, amount of energy lost from pipes so radiative transfer in cylindrical geometry is of uh, uh, great importance here uh, we will take the coordinate system as r Psi c now psi c is different from psi where psi was the azimuthal angle here psi c is basically the cylindrical coordinate system the azimuthal angle in the cylindrical coordinate system measured from some radial direction so this is psi c now this is a one dimensional problem so properties are allowed to vary only in the radial direction the cylinder is infinite in length in z direction so the properties do not vary in the z direction now in this case 
even though this problem is one dimensional the intensity is going to be function of radius theta as well as the azimuthal angle. So, this problem is relatively more involved than the problem we discussed previously that is plane parallel slab. Now, look at looking at the notation that we are using. So, let us say we have a, a cylinder extending infinite in both the direction and we were interested in radiation intensity at certain point p. Let us say this is point p. This intensity in this direction it is going to be function of theta psi and r comes from certain direction like this. So, this is the intensity direction that is basically it is coming. This direction we can look at this direction in the projection. So, we have this is the direction of movement of uh, radiation ray and we are basically interested in some point p here where we want to find out intensity. Now, at certain point the point was somewhere here okay. and this is basically another cylinder I have drawn here. So, the point p where we were we are interested in finding the intensity as a function of r theta and psi the ray is traveling at a in a certain path as is also shown here the ray is traveling at a certain path. Sometime before it reaches p the wave intersects the cylinder at this circle. So, we define the direction of movement of this radiation with an azimuthal angle psi. So, this angle basically represents the direction psi. So, I will just note down psi let us call this point q. So, psi is an azimuthal angle made by the ray from the local radial direction. Okay, local radial direction that means at point q this was the radial direction as is shown here also this is the local point here and from this direction the wave makes an angle psi. After certain time the wave reaches the point p at p this is the radial direction this is the new radial direction and this angle is going to be now psi minus d psi. So, the point that I want to say here is when the ray is traveling in space as is shown in this image its azimuthal angle is going to decrease. So, when the ray hits q the azimuthal angle was let us say psi and when the ray moves to p at a new location the angle becomes psi minus d psi. So, the angle basically changes. Now, we will use the, the trigonometry here we have this distance let us call this is distance this is p. So, r p is d s the movement of the ray is d s. So, distance r p is d s and we have this distance this distance as d s cos theta. So, let us go into the trigonometry here. So, from the triangle we have d r by d s. Okay. So, this is d s sin theta this distance is d s sin theta where this angle is theta the polar angle which is constant. So, polar angle is not changing in the previous example also the parallel media we have seen the polar angle does not change when the wave uh, when the ray moves in this example also the polar angle is not going to change. So, this distance is uh, this distance is d s sin theta. Okay. So, uh, so, from here we can write down d s sin theta upon d r as cos psi. So, this is uh, the angle psi. So, looking at this triangle cos psi is d r by d s sin theta. So, cos psi is d r by d s sin theta or d r by d s is simply equal to sin theta cos psi. So, what we are why we are doing this exercise because we want to change the coordinates as we have changed the coordinates in plane parallel media from d s to z here we will change the coordinate system 
from S the distance along the ray to radial coordinate system, cylindrical coordinate system R, theta and psi. So, we have found a relation between R and S as dr by ds is equal to sin theta cos psi. Now, along a beam uh, as I said that psi is going to decrease, this psi is going to decrease. So, earlier the angle was psi and after movement the distance s, the angle decreases from psi to psi minus d psi and we can write down d psi by dr as minus tan psi by r. So, look at this uh, triangle this distance is r d psi ok. So, r d psi is nothing but dr tan psi and minus sign denotes that the angle psi is going to decrease. So, d psi by dr is equal to minus tan psi by r this is from trigonometry uh, uh, only. So, we can write down a relationship between s and psi as d psi by ds is equal to d psi by dr dr by ds and dr by ds we have already calculated and d psi by dr also we have calculated. So, our relation becomes minus sin theta sin psi by r. So, now we apply the change of coordinates from di by ds the chain rule di by ds is partial with respect to r del, del i by del r dr by ds and similarly partial with respect to theta and partial with respect to psi. So, we substitute for dr by ds d theta by ds this is going to be 0 because the polar angle is not changing. So, we have to substitute for dr by ds. So, dr by ds is sin theta cos psi and d psi by ds is already calculated as minus sin theta sin psi by r. So, with this change in coordinate system we get di by ds is equal to sin theta cos psi partial with respect to r intensity is going to be function of r theta and psi minus sin psi by r partial i partial psi. Now, the radiative transfer equation in cylindrical media. So, we substitute for di by ds for the in the radiative transfer equation. So, left hand side becomes sin theta cos psi del i by del tau minus sin theta sin psi by r del i by del psi and in the non dimensional optical depth coordinates the right hand side is simply 1 minus omega i b minus i and then the in scattering source term. Now, this can be solved numerically. We try to solve the problem under certain simplification for the plane parallel slab, but this problem is going to be little more difficult to solve uh, analytically uh, even after simplifications. So, we will just leave it here this problem can be solved numerically. What we have done is derived the equation in cylindrical coordinates and we have simplified the equations in terms of the partial derivatives with respect to the optical coordinates tau and psi. This is a partial differential equation and needs to be solved. This is partial differential equation along with this integral term. So, this is again much more difficult, but it can be programmed and it can be solved using numerical methods. So, we will just uh, leave it here. Uh, in the next uh, lecture we will discuss approximate methods for the solution of RTE. This lecture and the previous lecture focused on exact method for simplified geometries. The next lecture will focus on approximate methods where we will simplify the dependence of intensity. Here we have not made any simplification or approximation. The intensity variation in three dimensional space was taken as it was. The geometry itself simplified the case. For example, in plane parallel media the geometry itself simplified the intensity variation with respect to the azimuthal angle. So, there was no dependence on azimuthal angle. In this cylindrical media also we have simplified geometry. So, intensity is not a function of z. All it is function of is basically a radial coordinate and of course, theta and psi. So, we have more complications here and we got a partial differential equation, but still we could obtain an analytical solution for plane parallel slab and this problem we have to solve numerically, but the solution is exact. Although the method is not analytical, the solution is exact. The next uh, topic we will discuss is approximate methods and we will see how to simplify the expression for intensity or dependence of intensity on theta and psi. So, thank you for your uh, attention.